Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is September 11th, 2024. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now there is a big fight. Big fight. It's Canelo. Right, one of the crown jewels of boxing. This is the top shelf. You ask someone, okay, name me the great fighters out there. Right, some will say Usyk, some will say Fury. I still say Fury. Um, some will say Inoue, some will say Crawford. Right, you would expect, even with that esteemed company, Bevel, the name Canelo belongs on that list right understand many people have come to be Canelo I think he's one of the most misunderstood fighters in the sport Canelo is a master defensively look past the big punch right Canelo is a guy who if you are in the pocket with him he can outbox you Right, Canelo is a guy who is efficient. In other words, Billy Joe Saunders doesn't make that many mistakes in his fight against Canelo. He lingers over the pocket just a little too long one round, and that's the fight. Canelo throws an uppercut. Right? I thought Kovalev was fighting an excellent fight against him. And keep in mind, Kovalev's a slugger, but Kovalev's moving. Canelo lands a left hook and life changes. Right, this is a great fighter. Now he's fighting a bigger man. Let's be real on Edgar Belanga. Belanga is taller than Canelo. He's bigger than Canelo. Be aware of the ages here. Belanga is a lot younger than Canelo. So just like Diego Pacheco, I'm expecting Berlanga, as he gets older, as most of us do, to gain weight. In other words, Canelo, older guy, he's fully grown. Right? Canelo's at the end of growing. You have Berlanga, and you realize that if this fight were held two years from now, Berlanga probably can't make 168. Right? Just look at him. You don't have to be a doctor or a genius. Just look at how big he is. Look at some of his fights. Go through my favorites. You'll see Berlanga highlights. Look at how much bigger he looks than his opponent. Right? This is a guy, and we don't talk about it enough, but young guys have an advantage in terms of making weight, in terms of being big for the weight class. Sooner or later, their body is going to say, nah, player, we're not cutting weight this time. The pounds aren't coming off. Just understand, this fight is a necessity now, in part because Berlanga is a naturally bigger guy than Canelo. So let's talk about the situation here. The casino has mispriced this, in my opinion. I'm going to save actual bets. For my premium subscribers here online but let's talk fight styles understand that Berlanga is a guy who started his career with not just 16 straight knockouts no he started the career with 16 straight in the first round right let me say this too Berlanga, we know he has the big right hand. Folks, he also has a big left hook. And he can throw it from distance. Right? You need to be mindful of the fact that Berlanga is not just physically bigger than Canelo. Berlanga is not just a quick starter. Now, he stopped getting first round knockouts then he stopped getting knockouts later in his career as he moved up the food chain right nothing stops a knockout streak 
more effectively than better competition, right? There's an open question on whether Belanga is a monster among those outside of the top 10, but as you venture into the top 10, the question here is, and he's unbeaten, whether Berlanga is a monster at all, right? So what I want people to do is to focus on fight styles, understanding that as good as Canelo is, right? And I believe Canelo is better than advertised. I'm telling you, for all the Canelo knockouts, for all the Canelo knockdowns, that Jaime Munguia fight, he knocks down Munguia. Munguia was supposed to be some Godzilla figure, was unbeaten at the time. He knocks down Munguia, and then, and I believe very few fighters can do this, he decides, okay, I've already shown my superiority. Let me just outbox this guy who's unbeaten in something like 40 fights and win this fight by decision. Understand, too, Canelo has disarmed some of the biggest punchers in the sport. Right now, I personally believe, and I've said this many times here, he lost the first two fights to Golovkin, huge puncher. Right, huge puncher. I believe Canelo lost the first two fights to Golovkin. Now, keep in mind, this is 168. Maybe you're dealing with a higher weight class and bigger level of puncher in Berlanga than middleweight Golovkin. But understand, even as I'm watching Canelo against Golovkin, a fighter who I thought was beating him in both the first fight and the second fight, Canelo's not getting knocked down, right? Understand, Golovkin had a KO streak as middleweight champion. And here's Canelo in with him, right? The second fight, Canelo's in the pocket with him. And Canelo knows defense to the point where against one of the biggest punchers in the sport at the time, pound for pound, Canelo doesn't get knocked down, right? Eventually, Father Time caught up with Golovkin. He slows down, right? We get the third fight. Maybe Father Time, since Canelo is well into his 30s, since Canelo has had more fights than you think. Folks, I'm telling you, Canelo on the way up had some fights that are not recorded, right? When he was a young guy. It's not just chronological age. It's the wear and tear on the tire. Canelo has shown some wear and tear in some late fights. Right? Didn't Golovkin hang around that last fight? Didn't John Ryder hang around that last fight? Right? I know the Jaime Munguia people are saying, hey, our guy went the distance against Canelo. Right? Well, what I want to do here, because I believe it's a conversation we need to have for this fight in particular, because this is a intergenerational fight. You have proven Canelo against unproven Berlanga. Right? Understand, too, Berlanga is from a boxing hotbed. Right? The home of Tyson. The home of Judah the home of Briggs, the home of Bo, right? New York City, Agbeko. Understand, New York City is a boxing hotbed. These guys frequent the same gyms today. Gerald Miller, heavyweight, right? Whoever Belanga is fighting against in his professional official fights, you need to assume that this guy, just like you should assume this of people um, out of Philly, right, for example. Folks out of Chicago. You need to assume that this guy, these days Minnesota, you need to assume that this guy has been in the ring with some really good sparring partners. Right? I mean, you know... I don't know what to say, but you have such an advantage 
when you come from a boxing hotbed because the competition is just so good. You know, it's like, you know, coming up playing Big Ten football, right? You know, you're, you're in against rough and tumble teams, Ohio State, Michigan, right? If you're holding your own against those guys, when you travel outside the division, right? When Berlanga steps in the ring away from New York City, he will have seen a lot already in sparring, right? This is a guy, as you can imagine, who got the publicity in a boxing hotbed that 16 straight first round KOs would give you. So let's focus on Canelo. Let me pivot here. Let me throw out my own individualized perspective. I don't believe Canelo is unbeatable. Right? Longtime subscribers here know I picked Bevel over him. I'm going to name four other fights other than Bevel that I think if you're analyzing Canelo, you need to look at a bit. Right? Mayweather. That's a very important fight. Right? The early rounds, I'm telling you, Mayweather comes out and is in front of him. Right? Now, let me say this on Mayweather. It needs to be said. I want you to think about Larry Holmes for a second. You know how Mayweather has a Philly shell. Right? He has his head tucked against his shoulder. Right? Now, think about where his hands are at that moment. Right? Mayweather doesn't come in most of the time with his hands up like this. He can. He has in fights. He has that skill. But when Mayweather gets rolling, his hand is dangling along his body. Right? It's genius because the dangling hand actually protects his body. Mayweather's wearing body armor. Now, I believe foundational to beating Canelo, who to me is a computer. Right? Canelo is defensively blessed. Canelo recognizes patterns and makes in-fights adjustments. Foundational to giving Canelo a real fight is that you have to hide your hands. In other words, when you're fighting defensively blessed fighters, if I'm throwing the punch from the same location, Sooner or later, Canelo is going to know how to block the punch. Know how to move away from the punch. Worse yet, Canelo, who's a switch, he can lead, he can counter, he'll figure out how to counter the punch. So, the genius of a Mayweather, the genius of a Larry Holmes, who threw his jab from his waist, didn't throw it from up here. Right? The genius of these guys is, the punch is coming from outside the frame. Right? That Mayweather left hook, in fact, believe it or not, that Canelo left hook, I believe Canelo learned a lot in that Mayweather fight, comes from down here. It's cat quick. In other words, defensively blessed fighters need to actually look around the ring to figure out the angles from which a Mayweather left hook is coming from, right? Let's talk about four other fights. I thought Canelo had problems in them. Mayweather, of course, great legs, could move around the ring, use the whole ring, could also park in the corner if he wanted to. If you saw that Marcus Maidana Mayweather fight, that's what Mayweather does, parks on the ropes. Well, Miguel Cotto, moved around the ring against Canelo, goes the distance against Canelo. I personally disagree with the scorecard. Miguel Cotto, great left hook. Of course, Cotto's left hook he could throw from his waist. Let's talk about three more fights. Arislandi Lara, great legs when he fought Canelo, could move away from Canelo on demand, had a great jab. Kovalev. Now I know people are saying, what the hell is Kovalev doing in a list with fighters like Mayweather, Kodo, Lara? Right? Understand, Kovalev the slugger came out against Canelo. Buddy McGirt was in his corner. 
We're shouting out to the trainer here because it was a masterful job. Believe it or not, for this fight, Buddy McGirt convinced a slugger to get on his toes and to dance, to move away from Canelo. Right? These are the moments where if you're watching the fight, you got to say, wow, this trainer did a great job here. Because Slugger Kovalev was effective. Slugger Kovalev is very much in that Mayweather fight. And he's doing it with movement. Now here again, one of the best parts of Kovalev's game is his jab. Right? Kovalev, like Lara, has an excellent jab. Right, so Kovalev, believe it or not, is staying alive against Canelo, fighting an excellent fight against Canelo. Right, of course, Kovalev didn't have the fitness that movers have, right, because moving was new for him as opposed to Lara. Younger Lara could move the entire fight. Right, if you're going to be out there and you're going to be moving, sticking and moving, you have to have the stamina. Kovalev had the stamina of a slugger, right? But interestingly enough, in that fight, believe it or not, Canelo takes a round off in the later part of that fight before getting the stoppage. Let's name, of course, the fifth fight, and that's the Bevo fight. You're talking about some of the best defense in boxing, defensively blessed like Canelo. You're talking about some of the best legs in boxing, you're talking about not just a jab, but you're talking about a combination puncher. Right, so Beevil is a guy who, as Canelo comes forward, Beevil's wearing body armor. Then, of course, Beevil's able to get off some combinations. He's able to throw enough. Doesn't have to sit down on his punches. This is that rare fighter who doesn't need to stop Canelo to beat Canelo. Now, what I want people to do, there is a fighter out there who I believe has the style to beat Canelo today. And his name is Hamza Shiraz. He's a middleweight. I believe a fight between Hamza Shiraz and Canelo would look like Roberto Duran's loss to Thomas the Hitman Hearns. Now, Hearns is a very important person in boxing. I believe Hearns, because of his length, because he knew how to use length, and because of his jab, and because of his power, right? Not the Hearns who fought Hagler, who decided to get into a shootout with Hagler, who, while 5'8", was a dog, right? Hagler was going to fight back, right? I'm not talking about that Thomas Hearns. I'm talking about the Hearns who had size on his advantage when he was younger, right? And who, when he fought a master in the pocket, like a Duran, wouldn't allow Duran to get in the pocket, right? Please, just pull up that fight film. You're going to see Hearns shooting a jab, right? Shooting a jab staying outside. Isn't that what Beevil did? Isn't that what Mayweather ends up doing? Isn't that the way Cotto fought Canelo? These are fights Canelo had problems with. Isn't that what Lara did? Hearns determines the spacing with a jab and with feints. Look at his hands. He's constantly fainting. Right? That jab is bludgeoning Duran, who can't get inside Hearns' reach. And then, of course, Hearns has the big, straight right hand that he can hit you from outside the area code with. Right? It's Hearns' jab and his ring coverage that resulted in him knocking out Duran. Duran hits the canvas face first. If you look at the Part of that fight after Duran is ruled out. His corner comes in the ring and they lift up Duran. And Duran looks around, he doesn't know what happened. I'm not sure if Duran remembers the end of that fight. 
Now, the reason all of that is important here is Berlanga has been talking a good game. I actually agree with Berlanga in his interviews where he says, look, the jab is the key here. Right? Berlanga needs to keep Canelo outside. There is a reach gap here. There is a size gap here. There is a height gap here. Right, the question in this fight, and it's a huge question, is whether Berlanga's jab is good enough to keep Canelo outside and whether Berlanga could maintain the kind of spacing that Hearns maintained against Duran that made it impossible for Duran to counter him. In other words, Duran is in against a taller guy who's hitting him with a jab that Duran can't duck under, is fainting continually. You think Roy Jones fainted a lot. Look at the Hearns-Duran film. Right? That's two Hall of Famers. Hearns is fainting. Duran doesn't know when the punch is coming. And then Hearns is throwing overhand rights. More ring coverage than just hooks. Hearns also throws hooks, but he has the sequencing down. Where he's throwing overhand rights and fainting, then as Duran backs up a bit and tries to cover up, that's when he throws hooks. Now, does Berlanga have the jab to keep Canelo outside? And is Berlanga clever enough? Does he have enough boxing experience and know-how to figure out how to get ring coverage on his straight right hand. Right? Does he have the boxing know-how to figure out the sequencing, to understand against this level of puncher, against this level of guy in the pocket, folks, you do not want to be in the pocket with Saul Alvarez. Does Berlanga know how to set things up so when he's throwing hooks, if he decides to throw hooks, he's not vulnerable to getting knocked out by a Canelo left hook. Or he's not vulnerable to have Canelo just take away his body like Canelo took away Liam Smith's body. Right, folks? It's an open question. Berlanga has a great straight right hand. Berlanga has the height. In my opinion, he doesn't have the back foot or the legs of any of these five guys. Mayweather, Cotto, Lara, Kovalev. I'll even include Kovalev and Bevel. He doesn't move like these guys. His highlights are highlights of him being on his front foot predictably. And that's a problem. Right? Because with Alara, you're guessing. Right? Lara could come out and stay away from you for three minutes. Right? And that's a guy with, we're finding out now, a lethal straight left hand. Right? You need to keep a Canelo guessing. If you're just on your front foot coming forward, you're Jaime Munguia. You're going to get dropped in the middle rounds. You know, you're Mr. Robot. You're going to be walking into Canelo shots. Right? So Berlanga here, if he has looked at film and has figured things out, there's the chance if he throws enough feints, if he's committed to a jab, if Canelo does a Joe Fraser, and Canelo can. Canelo has the bobbing and weaving when he wants to. Look at that Danny Jacobs fight. Right? If Canelo ducks under the jab, understand, Berlanga is going to have to show us a back foot. He's going to have to back away because he'll need to maintain distance. Right? He'll need distance. Otherwise, he'll be roadkill. So can Berlanga use the jab to create space? Hamza Shiraz can Shiraz has one of the best jabs in the sport. Does he have the discipline to use the jab 
to keep Canelo outside? And does he have the discipline to avoid throwing hooks early, to throw straight right hands, which would allow him to maintain distance on Canelo? Right, folks, let's just say I don't believe this fight goes the distance. Berlanga has a shot, but he's going to have to show us more of a back foot. He's going to have to show us more of an ability to stay outside the pocket. Right? He is working on his game. Understand, this is a big puncher who's a naturally bigger man than Canelo. Right? If he can land some straight right hands... Anything is possible. But I need for people to understand something that's profound. Right? Canelo fought Kovalev. Canelo fought Golovkin multiple times. Canelo has fought big punchers. Canelo has never been stopped. He's lost fights. Folks, he's one of the hardest men in boxing to knock down. He's fought guys who have high knockdown percentages, right? He met James Kirkland in Texas, goes head-to-head -head with Kirkland. The problem in that fight is that only one guy had defense, and that was Saul Alvarez, right? Understand. Berlanga is just the latest big puncher that Canelo has faced, right? Miguel Cotto is a big puncher. Understand, Canelo goes the distance with Miguel Cotto, right? Canelo, Berlanga, in my opinion, is not going to outbox Canelo. He has to land and stop Canelo. The only way Berlanga wins a decision is if he knocks Canelo down a few times. Right, and this becomes Chris Billum Smith against Lawrence Acoli. Right, if it's just a boxing match, Canelo is so defensively blessed, and Canelo is so hard to find in the ring. Sometimes being the shorter man is actually an advantage. Right, you're hard to find, you're ducking away from shots, the guy's body is right there. You know, if the judges see you two making the other guy miss, you know, boxing is replete with a long list of shorter guys, right? Old-timers know about Sam Langford, right? You know, Rocky Marciano, uh, Joe Fraser, uh, Dick Tiger. I mean, you have a whole list of shorter guys who ran roughshod through their divisions. That's what Canelo has done at 168 pounds. Right, Berlanga is gonna have to show us, right, ring coverage that I just haven't seen on any of his films. Right, just food for thought. Berlanga also is kind of like Arthur Berturbiev. He likes to hit you on the side of the head. Right, understand. Guys throwing overhand rights or trying to hit you on the forehead, right? Just recognize that Canelo, like Joe Fraser, is going to be moving his head. So what Berlanga is going to have to consider doing, especially if Canelo's moving forward into the pocket, look at the Canelo-Rocky Fielding fight, right? If Canelo is moving forward, trying to get in the pocket, Canelo... Jamal Charlo, excuse me, Jamal Charlo. Right, understand, Berlanga is going to have to start hitting Canelo. And this is something vets do in the chest, on the shoulder, right, on the bicep. In other words, if a guy's head is on a swivel and is hard to find, Berlanga is going to have to find a way to keep him outside. Right now, when you look at the Thomas Hearns Duran film, you're going to find that Duran Hearns was incredibly accurate.
on power shots to Duran's head, which you don't see a lot of in Duran fights. Well, you don't see a lot of that in Canelo fights. Right? So just understand, Rolanga is going to have to show us a back foot. He's talking about using his jab. Let's hope he's real about that. Let me also say, too, there are many Berlanga highlights where a guy feels his power and then goes over to the ropes. Right, folks? You're not going to have that in this fight. Right? If Berlanga starts landing power shots, Canelo's not going to volunteer to go over by the ropes. Right? Canelo is one of the hardest punchers in the sport pound for pound. Right, folks? That's the real secret to Canelo. Right? We've been looking at him. He has this cute nickname. He, you know, is a low-key guy. He doesn't really try to show you that he's alpha. Right? I thought in the Jaime Munguia promotion, he came across as a big brother type guy. Right? Don't kid yourself. If they come in, I'm to the middle of the ring. I'm expecting Canelo to get low. Right? I'm expecting Canelo, who has great head movement, to be low. And to let Berlanga know, you open up on me, I'm opening up on your body. So, for Berlanga to win, and he has a chance, he needs to shoot a jab. He needs to throw straight right hands. He needs to hurt Canelo. If Canelo hides his head, he needs to hit Canelo in the chest. He needs to hit Canelo in the throat. He needs to hit Canelo in the shoulder. He needs to throw punches on Canelo even when there's a lull in the action. To keep his right hand free, he needs to throw jabs to Canelo's body without exposing his head. Look at the opening round. Floyd Mayweather comes out, starts throwing jabs to Canelo's body. Mayweather knew he had the foot speed advantage on Canelo. Right? Mayweather knew he did not want to be deep in the pocket with Canelo. Berlanga needs to figure that out. Right? I'm expecting someone to get stopped here. Understand, some recent Canelo fights have gone the distance. You heard me mention the Jaime Munguia fight, right? The Bevo fight, the John Ryder fight, the uh, Golovkin fight, right? Some Canelo fights have gone the distance. I don't expect this one to. Right? I think Berlanga has to force the issue offensively. And I think either Canelo gets caught or Canelo does the catching. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.